Hello, welcome to Proof Weight Loss Surgery Works. It is I, Banded Wendy, your Friday vlogger. How are you? It's the last Friday of July, 2012, so it's 7-27-12. And I'm going to jump right into this week's topic. It is, what is the biggest challenge you face today on the journey? And there's a whole list of potential things that you may be challenged with. Examples. Uh, food choices, getting in all your water, fitness, mental hunger, vitamins, fitting in or having a sense of belonging, self-image, body confidence, body dysmorphia, dating, romantic relationships, sense of style, life balance, confidence. And I um, came up with this question. <laughs> Uh, and I was just sitting here thinking, what is it that I struggle with? And I am Banded Wendy, uh, three and a half years post-op, lap band. I've lost about 112 pounds. Um, took me 68 weeks to, to lose the weight, and I've been at my goal weight for two years. So, so far, so good, you know? I've changed my life. I truly have changed my life. I don't live the same way I lived four years ago. And one of the big, big impacts in my life outside of the lap band is my fitness level and my joy and my passion and my pride uh, and my desire to stay driven um, and have goals around my fitness. I think it's a big part of my journey. Uh, eventually that scale isn't the answer, isn't where you get your victory so much anymore. And I have chosen fitness as my path to glory, right? So, you know, if you think about life and your own personal experience with fitness or others that you know, even the thinnest, skinniest, healthiest people you know, if you're like me, you will have the realization that most people are hit and miss with fitness. They'll go through waves of it. They'll be on a good fitness kick for three, four, five, six months. The holidays come, summer vacation comes, work trade show schedules come, fitness takes a back seat. And eventually, three, four, five, six months, the New Year's here, uh, spring break's almost here, bathing suit season's almost here, whatever it is, they get back on the upswing. And uh, that hasn't happened to me. And my goal is that it does not happen because that's how I used to live. That's not how I'm living anymore. However, um, my husband, who was my boyfriend, who was my weight loss surgery hero, uh, does nothing physical except for go to work and he has always been a champion for me and a cheerleader for me and supportive about my fitness when I started the couch 5k program at week 15 in my weight loss surgery journey he was extremely supportive and knew that basically from womb to tomb from my house to the gym workout back to the house where we lived together was about an hour. So uh, he would give me that hour without question. Um, and slowly but surely I went from you know running three days a week doing the couch to 5k program to running six seven days a week to going from just doing a 5k to training for you know ten weeks for a half marathon to doing a second half marathon uh, to break it into P90X, which was 90 days, 6 days a week, uh, an hour a day, plus 30 minute run. So it's basically, you know, doing about an hour and a half to two hours worth of exercise 6 days a week. Um, and then I went into triathlon training, which was easily two hours, uh, five days, six days a week. Uh, and then I went into more half marathon training, um, which is an hour, you know, five, six days a week, if not more. And then I went into full marathon training, um, which was, you know, I was running 40 plus miles a week. 
So uh, easily, uh, you know, some days was a three, four hour, five hour run day. Um, so instead of doing this, oh, and then I went to P90X2 and, you know, now I'm back to getting, uh, getting ready to do uh, my triathlon training again here in another week. And then it'll be half marathon training again. And then it'll be uh, P90X again. And then it'll be marathon training again, doing my second marathon next year in September. So my point here is I'm not this girl, right? I'm this girl. And my husband does not stay home. He's not the husband that comes home every night at 5 o'clock and is here for dinner. And uh, we don't live that normal life. My husband works on the train. He's gone four, six, or eight days at a time. He is home a guarantee of two days. He could be home two, four, six days at a time. We have no schedule. We, plan, we don't plan things. So myself, all those fitness things I talked about, I'm a planner. I like to check things off a list. And I have a schedule. And I train based on a plan. And that does so many things for me. It gives me confidence, makes me believe I'm ready to go out and do the race or participate in the event. Um, keeps my, you know, 210 minutes of exercise on track. But I don't like to be derailed from my workout schedule. And it's come to a point now where my husband wants more quality time with me. Still supportive and very proud of me for what I've accomplished on a fitness level, but um, desires that if he's home for, you know, one of his love languages is quality time. And he needs that from me and he deserves that from me. And, you know, we've kind of went round and round about it for about five, six, seven months. And finally, he was like, I think you should change your work schedule. And I think you only need to work out five days a week, no matter what. And the two days a week that I'm home for sure, you need to change your work schedule so we could go do what I want to do. Because he likes to go to happy hour. He wants to go to concerts. He wants to do fun things, you know. Um, and I don't want to do those. My workout time is the time that he wants to be going out and doing those fun things. And I don't want to go out and do fun things and then have to come home after eating or drinking or just being tired, you know, after going strong for 15 hours in the day to go to the workout. So I'm changing my work schedule, right? This is about struggles or challenges and how I'm fixing that. So I've agreed to put in two rest days or combination, um, go to work at a different time when he's home uh, and not work out on those days so that we can have the quality time that he desires. Kind of feel like I'm the only one who made the shift in that compromise, but I have the flexibility to do it. So we're going to try that. Uh, we'll see how that works with this triathlon training coming up. But what are you going to do, you know? Um, I'm not going to stop. And he and I deserve to have those times with each other. So it has to work. Um, the other thing I'll talk about is, you know, I walk in a circle where I put myself in a situation, multiple situations, where I'm the go-to girl. A lot of people have a lot of questions. And nobody realizes how many questions I'm getting. Um, because they're not me getting the questions. And I am reminded over and over again that my struggle is that I want to do the work for everybody. Um, I hear a lot of people talking about what they know they need to do, but they're not necessarily getting the results they should from doing the talk, walking the talk. Um, and then just makes me believe they're not really walking the talk. They've just heard it so many times, they've convinced themselves they're doing it when they're not. And then you give people advice, and they don't follow it. And so I just want to go do it for them. Um, so that's a struggle for me, because I get hit up so often for advice. Um, and even close personal friends, uh, it hurts me. It makes it hard for me, because I'm like, but you can do it this way. Um, and so how I'm overcoming that struggle is 
not giving as much advice, uh, not putting myself in those situations as often, and listening uh, and letting others come to their own conclusion rather than giving them the answer. Because we all need support on the journey, but nobody can do the work except for me or except for you. So I'm working on not trying to fix everyone and do it for them, but allowing them to fix themselves and watch them do it. However they get there, they'll get there. Um, and last but not least, stoma awareness. Um, I don't want to ever stretch out my stoma. I don't want to take advantage of the fact that I have a lap band. Um, and so for the last six weeks, I've been taking pictures of my food, uh, lunch and dinner my start and my finish and I don't have to finish the whole plate I don't have to eat all the calories I only have to eat until I'm satisfied and that's completely different than finishing what's on your plate and the photo project on Facebook I'm proof WLS works on Facebook has been a big help to me and I did that last summer and I'm wrapping it up in the next couple of days uh, for this summer so um, and it's easy the further out you get you know uh, to shove a little bit more food in and I, I can't do that because portion control was my issue from the get-go. So um, being aware, um, realizing it's an old problem that I don't want to reoccur, and I'm making an effort to, to track what I'm doing and in visual representation and keeping photo albums so that I can go back and look at it in the future has definitely made an impact on me overcoming that struggle and, and not struggling. So anyway. That's my answer. Thanks for watching. I appreciate we got a couple different response videos this week. That's pretty cool. Um, rate, comment, comment, make a response video. See you next week. Take care. Thanks. Bye.